All right, here we are. We're live. Um, I went live a little few minutes early to give time pe uh, give people time <laughs> to log on. Um, I'm excited to be able to do this. I've never done this before. You're going to hear me say this again. So as people start showing up, I've got a um, we'll we'll start reading around 11:05 or so. So here in about 10 minutes, you can just sit here and look at me for right now. Um, let's see. wonder if it will pop on and tell me who's actually here. Um, let me know that you can hear me. Let me know that you can see me. I would appreciate that greatly. I've never done anything like this before, so. Dun, dun. Oh, I got a thumbs up. All right, somebody's here. <gasps> Hello, Winter and Vivian. Hi, Allison. Hi, guys. I'm gonna miss you this week, Winter. But we all have to take our precautions right now, and I appreciate everybody logging on. Um, now, some of my kids in my class, um, my after school care and my summer class have already done this. So, um, but I think it's a really fun little activity. All right, we're up to six. That's great. Hooray. Um, you know, I, I don't feel like I have any better place to be quarantined. At least I can keep myself entertained with a bunch of coloring books and paint. And um, so we'll get started here in just a few. We'll let the numbers rack up a little bit. I don't think it's quite 11 o'clock. So, hallelujah. I'm going to get rid of my gun. So I'm not sitting here. Okay. We'll see here. Got a few more popping on here. Um, so go ahead and start collecting, you know, either coloring books and, or p plain paper and coloring page or I can't talk. This is going to be fun, y'all. Um, coloring utensils as in crayons or coloring pencils and I'm going to show you how to draw this out before we actually paint it. Normally you know I, I like to paint things as we go and and build on top of it. I will be painting these today. The colors that you're going to need are red, orange, yellow, probably a little bit of white and either black or brown. So we're going to paint a little scene out of the book. I uh Hello, Elizabeth Durbin. Happy to see you. And I hope Kenny and Jacob there are with you. Um, so I picked this book up in a little homestead called Luke and Buck, Texas. Um, they, it's like population is three, but that's where Waylon Jennings wrote the famous song. And I stumbled across this book back in the corner of their gift shop. And let's, let's count how many times I touch my face. How about that? Or move my hair. Um, and so when I, I stood back in the corner and I read this book and I was like, oh, it's so sweet. And I, I'm happy to be able to share it with you guys. This is one of probably one of my favorite books. And um, I'll try to make sure that you can see the pictures in it. And oh, we're up to 10 people. All right. Let me see what time it is. I hope this doesn't mess anything up. 11 o'clock on the dot. All right. Good deal. Hi, Adelicia, Katie. Good morning. Um, hopefully, my voice will not shake while I'm watching this. My sister-in-law. Hello, Elizabeth Pointer Kuiper. It is lovely to see you. I'm glad you guys kicked on for the day. Um, and maybe a, a Caitlin can, can watch along. So... Thank you all for supporting me and trying this. And I'll be trying to do these kind of often over the next few weeks. If this one works, who knows? <laughs> We're in this together. The one thing that I do know is that hopefully you'll learn something. Uh, hopefully we'll be entertained. And 
um, if we mess up, we'll just try again. So I'm, I'm very, very happy to have all of you all here this morning. Okay, so number 13. What I'm going to do is first read The Legend of the Indian Paintbrush. And this is an old legend that was told. And um, I read the author's note. And the guy asked permission from the, the lady that had talked about all the state flowers and things, had written a book about it, he asked her permission to, to make this into a little legendary story. Hey, Sarah. Hi. Hi, Lucas. I thank you all for logging on this morning. So, okay. So, I think we're around the 11 o'clock hour. I'll go ahead and start reading. And like I said, the things that you're going to need, red, orange, yellow, and either brown or black, whichever you want to do. We're going to paint a little sunset scene here in just a little bit. So has anybody read this book before? Let me show you the cover here. I'm going to do my best to show you the pictures as we go along. Oh, and everything's backwards. So <laughs> hi, Mara. Evangeline Angus. I, don't, I doubt Angus is watching along, but... That's okay. Love to you all. Okay. So, here we're going to get started on reading The Legend of the Indian Paintbrush. It is really, really the sweetest story. So, here we've got our little guy. It says, Many years ago, when the people traveled the plains and lived in a circle of teepees, there was a boy who was smaller than the rest of the children in the tribe. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't keep up with the other boys. Who were always riding, running, shooting their bows, and wrestling to prove their strength. Sometimes his mother and father worried about him. But the boy, let's see, this guy, little guy right here, who was called Little Gopher, was not without a gift of his own. From an early age, he made toy warriors from scraps of leather and pieces of wood, and he loved to decorate smooth stones with red juice from berries that he found in the hills. A wise shaman of the tribe understood that Little Gopher had a gift that was very special. Do not struggle, Little Gopher. Your path will not be the same as others. They will grow up to be warriors. Your place among the people will be remembered for a different reason. So let's look here. I don't know if you can see all the little wooden trinkets and stones that he made. Aren't those sweet? And in a few years, when Little Gopher was older, he went out to the hills alone to think about becoming a man, for this was the custom of the tribe. And it was there that a dream vision came to him. The sky filled with clouds, and out of them a young Indian maiden and an old grandfather came from the clouds. I just read that sentence wrong, but anyway, you all get the gist. Um, she carried a rolled up animal skin and he carried a brush made of fine animal hairs and pots of paint. So let's see, there we go. The grandfather spoke, my son, these are tools by which you shall become great among your people. You will paint pictures of deeds of the warriors and the visions of the shaman, and people shall see them and remember them forever. The maiden unrolled a pure white buckskin and placed it on the ground. Find a buckskin as white as this, keep it, and one day you will paint a picture that is pure as the colors in the evening sky. So there's the grandfather with his paintbrushes, and there's the Indian maiden with her white buckskin. As she finished speaking, the clouds cleared and a sunset of great beauty filled the sky. Little Gopher looked at the white buckskin, and on it he saw the colors as bright and as beautiful as those made by the setting sun. Look at that. We're lucky enough down here to see some pretty incredible sunsets with those colors. Maybe that's why I love this book so much. Then the slow sun slowly sank behind the hills. The sky drew dark. Let's try that again. The sun slowly sank behind the hills. The sky grew dark and the dream vision was over. Little Gopher returned to the circle of people. Here he is all by himself. On the starry sky. 
The next day, he began to make soft brushes from hairs from different animals and stiff brushes from hairs from the horse's tail. He gathered berries and flowers and rocks of different colors and crushed them to make his paint. He collected the skins of animals which the warriors brought home from them hunt, their hunts. He stretched the skins on wooden frames and he, till he pulled them very tight. So there's his paint brushes that he's making and there's his little pots and the colors of paint. And he began to paint pictures of great hunts of great deeds and of dream visions so that his people would always remember. But even as he painted, little Gopher sometimes longed to put aside his brushes and ride out with the warriors. But he always remembered his dream vision and he did not go with them. So there's everybody headed off on their hunt and he's there with his buckskin. Oops, skip the page. Many months ago, he had found his pure white buckskin, but it remained empty because he could not find the colors of the sunset. He used the brightest flowers, the reddest berries, the deepest purples from the rocks, and still his paintings never satisfied him. They looked dull and dark. I still think that they are beautiful, but I understand trying to get certain colors. Sometimes it can get frustrating. Um, but you just got to keep trying. He began to go to the top of the hill each evening and look at the colors that filled the sky to try to understand how to make them. He longed to share the beauty of his dream vision with people. But he never gave up trying. And every morning when he awoke, he took out his brushes and his pots of paint and created the stories of the people that, with the tools that he had. Okay, here we go. One night, as he lay awake, he heard a voice calling to him. Because you have been faithful to the people and true to your gift, you shall find the colors you are seeking tomorrow. To make, tomorrow, take the white buckskin, go to the place where you're watching the sun in the evening. There on the ground, you will find what you need. The next evening, as the sun began to go down, Little Gopher put aside his brushes and went to the top of the hill. And as the colors of the sunset spread across the sky, and there on the ground all around him were brushes filled with paint, each one color of the sunset, Little Gopher began to paint quickly and surely using one brush, then another. And as the colors of the sky began to fade, Little Gopher gazed at the white buckskin and he was happy. He had found the colors of the sunset. He carried his painting down to the circle of the people, leaving the brushes on the hillside. And the next day when the people awoke, the hills were ablaze with color for the brushes had taken root in the earth and multiplied into pant, plants, pants, <laughs> multiplied into plants of brilliant reds, oranges, and yellows. And every spring from that time, the hills and the meadows burst into bloom. And every spring, the people danced and sang the praises of Little Gopher, who had painted for the people. And the people no longer called him Little Gopher, but he who brought the sunset to earth. The end. Hi, Chase. Isn't that just the sweetest little story? I love, I'm so grateful that Little Gopher brought the sunset to earth because that is one of my favorite things to paint. So as we um, get set up here, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna try to paint sideways. We're gonna go step by step and we're going to try to paint. Da -da -da -da. Hold on a minute, I'm gonna go back to the page. We're gonna try to paint something similar to this, not necessarily the people in the clouds, but we're gonna paint, 
more like this. Have our own little sunset. And then we'll add our own little Indian paintbrushes, which are native to Wyoming and uh, Texas, just so you know. Um, okay, so let's get ready. This, honestly, hopefully I've got all my brushes out. You can use whatever kind of brushes you want to. And again, if you're using coloring books or paper, and, um, mm hmm yeah, crayons, that's what those things are called, good grief, hey Gwen and Nora, hey Emma, hi Stephanie Calhoun, I'm so glad you guys are joining me, this is so much fun, and i got to, um, hopefully, I'll be able to do a few more, I thought this morning, I was like, well, I should have done something about St. Patty's Day, but, Oh well, um, didn't, didn't even think about this. This is the idea I had, so I'm going with it. So, all right. So now, one big decision that you have to make is that um, I'm gonna turn this and hopefully it won't fall flat. Um, you have to decide whether or not you want you uh, to have a portrait or landscape. I think I'm gonna do it landscape just so it'll be easier um, for you guys to see. And for those of you that have not painted with me before, which I think most of you that are watching have, which I appreciate greatly, um, if you're using acrylic paint, make sure that you're wearing old clothes because you know that doesn't come out very well. And hey, Natalia, hi, sweetheart. I'm so glad y'all are joining me. All right, so is everybody ready to go? We're getting ready to start being creative. I'm gonna go kind of fast, but hopefully you'll be able to watch this um, if you miss anything and you guys can send me messages if you need to and I really hope that you guys are going to paint along with me or color along with me and and post pictures to the website I since we're all um, you know in this time of uncertainty at least we can be here together at this moment and for that I am very very grateful so okay so the first thing that I'm gonna do I'm gonna kind of sketch out where I want my little mountains to go and as Bob Ross says, you can't just have one. He has to have a little friend. So I'm going to do mine there. Not a super straight line. It's absolutely fine. And then I'm going to come actually probably right here. Make one more mountain and one more from there. Okay. All right. So we've got a few of those. And let's see. I'm going to go ahead and use just a regular old size paintbrush, whatever size that you have. And I like to do my sky first. Um, that way, if I need to, I can come back and make my mountains. I just wanted to kind of know where they were gonna go. So we're gonna start, here's what my plate looks like. I've got my red, orange, and yellow and got a little bit of white. When I use yellow, I always use white because I'm we're going for like a sunsetty kind. So let's start with that. We're gonna put um, a little bit of yellow and white on our brush, like so. This is what I call painting with reckless abandon. Um, meaning have more than one color on your paintbrush. So I'm not gonna switch my paintbrush this entire sunset, okay? So here we go. Let's see what I can do painting sideways and I'm just going to kind of color it in it's okay if you go over the chalk it is a-okay actually it's really pretty because I used pink chalk so it's moving right in all right I'm gonna add a little bit more white because I want my little sun to be going down right here and again same th same technique if you guys are coloring should work it's just allergies. If you hear me snuffing my nose, it's just allergies. My friend Nicole said, I've never been so aware of my allergies. And that's okay. All right, so I'm just kind of coloring out and I'm going straight into the yellow. I don't know if you guys wanna see how I'm going into the paint, but I'm just going straight into the yellow and I'm just coloring with my paintbrush. I want those variations of color in there. Kind of come in and blend a little bit. And I'm moving it out until, if you'll notice, very little paint's moving, okay? 
So I'm gonna bring my yellow pretty much across my little horizon there. And I mean, you can turn your brush this way and make bigger brush strokes if you want to. Whew. All right. So let's see. So all we're going to do is just color in. And I'm liking the way that's looking. So I'm going to go straight into my next color, which is orange. Your orange might be really a lot lighter than mine. Actually, I've got some right here. Let's put some of that out too. Because I like to play with all kinds of colors. Now, these craft paints work just as well. You just may have to make more than one layer. And if you want, you can add a little bit of white to it too. So, a little bit of the orange. And here we go, straight in. Woohoo! That is pretty. And then I'm coming into my yellow just a little bit so it'll blend. You guys think that this is starting to look like the sunset color that uh, little gopher was playing with? So try not to make it a straight line because as those colors start to bounce off the clouds, you know, that's the best time. If it's a cloudy night in Fairhope, but you can start seeing the sun goes down, that's the time that I run down to the pier because I know, ooh, I'm getting rain. <laughs> Knock my easel over. Everybody can still see? Um, those are the times I'm going to run down to the pier because I know that the clouds are going to light up with pink and red and blue and purple. All right. And actually right here, I'm going to pick up a little bit more yellow on my brush. Doo -doo -doo. Just to make some different colors in there. Lighten it up here, darken it a little bit. I'm gonna have to stand up because this is a odd angle, but this is fun. I'm glad y'all are playing with me. Again, I picked up a little bit more yellow. I'm just coloring. We can come down here and blend that in a little bit. Your paint should be wet enough to help blend. Okay. Now then. I'm going to, this canvas board doesn't cover on paint very well, so you'll see me coming back, kind of coloring it in. All right, I'm going to go for red, orange, and the littlest bit of white on my brush, and I'm going to kind of start from the top and color in. Whatever you want to. You can make big brush strokes. You can make little circles. However you want to get that paint on the canvas is fine. You know me. There's no wrong ways to do art. Blend that in a little bit. A little bit more red and orange on my brush. Going straight into it. One of the things I have to tell people a lot is that, you know, if you use paint, you'll actually make a painting, but if you don't, then it make, <clears throat> makes you work a little harder. I guess I could go on the other side of the table, but probably would help. You guys still with me? All right. I'm put, picking up some orange. And so these flowers usually come in orange and yellow and pink. So, how's that looking? Okay, a little bit more. I'm gonna scoot this over so I don't have to reach so far. I'm gonna go with a little bit of orange and yellow. And you see how I'm doing this? I'm just kind of building it in. It's like the lines were already drawn for me but I'm letting my imagination determine where I want what colors. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go for some straight up white and red, throw in big old pink cloud in here somewhere. Kind of fill that in. And I'm just gonna move that around a little bit, just kind of blend it in with the other paints that I have. Okay. I feel like I need a, just a little bit more paint over here. So I'm gonna go a little bit of the orange and the bright orange and the red. And come in and color that in. What? Look at that! How fun is that? All right. I can't really. So one of the things that I do when I'm painting. I make sure I pick it up and I, I move it as far away from me or I stand up and I move far back from it and I look at it from a further perspective just to see, okay, is there anything that I would change? Where do I want to add a little bit more or am I happy with it? Like I see that that didn't blend really well right there so I'm just going to take my brush real light like a feather duster for those children that don't know what that is. That's a Swiffer on a stick. Um, okay. And then I've got my, and you can also be doing this with watercolor too. I forgot to tell you that. Got my paint. The best lesson I can ever teach any of you, when you are done with a paintbrush, put it in a cup of water because if you do not, it will dry and come solid as a rock and you will never be able to use that paintbrush again. So, okay, so I switched my paintbrush even though I didn't need to. I don't know why I did that. So, <laughs> all right. Anyway, um, I notice I, I want my sun just a little bit brighter. So, I actually have a little bit of pink on mine. Oh, Kaylin, I'm, I was wondering if y'all could hear the music or not. You know, in these times... You gotta do whatever you can do to stay calm. All right. Ooh, I kind of like how that is. I might have made it darker, but I'm gonna come back in with some straight white and put a few little streaks in there, here and there. All right. I think I'm okay with that. Okay. All right. So I don't know why I changed my brush, but I did. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and keep using this one. If you've decided, since the sun is going down, our ground that is the closest to us is going to be the darkest. Since our lightest part is going to be in the distance, then we need to make what up, what's up front pretty dark. It's okay to make it straight black. Um, you can use brown and black. You can use brown and black and white, which I think is the combination that I'm going to go for. So, um, let's see. I'm just putting a very little white. Black is a very overpowering color. And like I said, this is how I paint every time I paint, you guys. I always have more than one color on my paintbrush. I try to go pick up the color from the edge so I don't use or don't mix in the whole part of the white. I can still use this part of the white if I need to. I kind of went right in the middle of the brown, but I knew I wasn't going to use that for anything else. But we'll just pick that up, okay? And then we're going to just color in our mountains. Okay, so this mountain is the closest to us. Do we believe that it needs to be the darkest? Absolutely. Again, if you're just tuning in, if you hear me sniffle, it is just my allergies. I'm going through this pretty fast. You know, you don't have to make these look perfect when you're using these kind of colors. That's why you'll see a lot of my artwork will have silhouettes of people and dogs and animals because I don't want to work on the details, but I love trying to find the shapes of stuff. Thank you, Katie. I appreciate your compliment. I appreciate, I hope you're playing along with me. 
All right, so we want to make sure that this is the darkest one. You know, we could leave a little snow right there, but we're not going to. Okay, I'm just going to put a lot of paint on my brush and decide where I want my mountain to go. What shape do we want? And make sure that you move that paint around. Make it nice and thin so you don't have any big gloppy moments. We use a blow dryer here in the studio to usually dry between um, the background and, and doing the forefront stuff, but we didn't have to today since we went ahead and drew it out. I have to remember to keep talking. <laughs> Get lost in the zone here. Okay. So mountain one is done. So as we get a little closer, it's gonna get just a little lighter. So I'm gonna add what color? I'm gonna add just a little bit more white. So let's see if, oh good, I did it. It's just slightly lighter. Actually going to make mine a little bit lighter right here towards the sun towards the top of this mountain just so the sun can reflect off of it this is not the greatest paintbrush but that's okay we will make do okay so again just a little bit lighter and if you mess up your first one come back in and with a little bit of darker color and go right over top of it. Okay? Hi, Dolly. Give her a little pat on the head for me, Katie. All right. And I'm going to come back here. It's even closer to the sun, even though it may not look like it. But this guy's going to be even lighter. So we're going to add even more white. two little mountains come together it looks like they are and just put a little dark separating line there so I know where they are a little bit different blend that in a little bit okay how fun all right so now um this is you know super dark and still a little bit wet and I don't normally paint this way I did put my paintbrush in the water and I'm gonna go for an even smaller paintbrush something this small um, you know something pretty tiny okay and then I forgot to tell you, get a little bit of green out. So now is the time to get a little bit of green. And is everybody good right now? Are we finished? I know I went really fast on that. So we're gonna take our book, try to dry it off a little bit. I forgot to turn the air on, so I'm gonna fan myself a little bit. Okay, and now we're going to attempt to make 
little Indian paintbrush paint um, pictures. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. So you guys can study those for just a second. Since we made a sunset, ours is, this was springtime during the day, so. All right, so it looks like, let's see. We're just gonna make a few little brush strokes up. It looks like a bunch of these. And even for the uh, flower buds. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, think that I had another canvas out. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so while this is drying, I'm gonna lay mine over here and I'm gonna show you how to make a big Indian paintbrush. So that's why we're going for a small, tiny brush, but I wanna show you the brush strokes that you need to make to make a new one. So um, I use pretty primary colors here at the studio, and we mix a lot of our colors. So this is what's called a phthalo green, and Bob Ross used this a lot with his oil paint. And then this is um, like bright yellow or something, I don't know. And I'm just taking a little bit of my green and mix it again in with my yellow to make like a little lime green color. But I want the dark green and the yellowish green on my brush at the same time, okay? And then this is making the flowers. You do not have to make one this big. This is just to show you the tiny brush strokes that we're gonna make, okay? Everybody understand that? All right, so we're gonna start at the bottom. I, this is how I'm gonna do it. Start at the bottom and work your way up and just pull out some of those fun little leaves right there, okay? And because my brush is dirty, I'm gonna grab me another one real here. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a pink one. So I'm gonna have just a little bit of red and a whole lot of white on my brush. And it looks like it's kind of the same. Actually gonna put a little bit of orange in there too because why not this is my flower I'm gonna make him whatever color I want to so I'm just making whew, got a little out of control there but that's okay sometimes it's easier to make things small <laughs> all right so I'm gonna add some straight old red in there just to give it some definition of color okay like a little, little fluffy, little power flower puff. I don't know what. Never seen one of these in person, and I would love to. So, okay, done with the flower. So now we're gonna get out our little bitty brushes. I'm just gonna go right over top of that. That should be pretty dry. That's a great thing about acrylic paint is that it, um, it dries really quick. So. Got a little bit of my, and because I'm using dark, or going over dark, I'm gonna make, add a little bit of white in, make a lighter green. And I'm just gonna decide where I'm gonna put these. Like I'm making a little V. that a little bit thicker than I normally would but I'm just gonna bring my little flower pet petals with a different brush make them as crazy as if you want to make them Ooh, I picked up some black that's okay want to have those variations of color because it's where the light's hitting. And I'm going to do another one. So you can do a straight line if you want to. And then just bring off 
your little and we're gonna do an orange one next I'm not doing a yellow one right here because I don't think it would show up so crazy little Indian paint brushes here and now then you can put as many flowers as you want to so I'm gonna go back in the book just a page or two and show you this is before they've bloomed so let's do one like that let's do do this one right here and I'll make it really small I don't know if you can see it um, I'm just gonna do one little line right there Ooh, a lot of black paint right there so I'll just put some white in there we'll make it gray who, who cares and what did I do with my little bitty brush it's always nice to have a paper towel on hand Okay, so I think this is where I'm going to make my yellow one. Pick up a lot of white, a little bit of yellow. And remember, we're making the bud of the Indian flower. So, looks like a little candlestick. A lot of things when you paint are in the shape of a parenthesis. If you can see the small shapes of things, you know, recognize a, a triangle or a square or parentheses, a football. Believe it or not, there's, you'll be able to see a lot more. Or you'll be able to draw pretty much anything if you can just identify the primary shape that is in it and build from there. That's how I taught myself. just not working and that's okay it's having a hard time covering up that black that's all right now we got a little bud hi Cassie Kuiper my oldest niece um let's see all right do you do we think you guys have any suggestions on what we can add to it you know, it looks like he's a desert person. We can probably put a little cactus in there if we wanted to. Um, we could put a few flowers in there. Uh, we've already got flowers. I meant birds. <laughs> birds, flowers, whatever. Your flowers can be birds. My birds can be flowers. So I am going to show you how to draw. I'm going to, because the hawk is one of my favorite, favorite birds. But most birds, when they're flying in the sunset, and you can draw this out before you want, if you want to, but there's a couple of different ways to do it. And then we'll be closing up our video here in just a minute. Um, let's see. You can do a little pretty V through there. And I added just a little bit of a body. He could be an eagle. And then with the slightest touch, I'm putting a little nose on there. So I'm going to zoom him in to you guys. I don't know if you can see him. But he's a happy little bird. I'm actually going to add a little bit more to his body. There we go. Put some more. Um, if he's just gliding, you can... Oops. Well, or make one look exactly the same. <laughs> All right. Um, and then you can do, if he's just gliding, just don't make your V as deep as I did on the second one. Okay. I'm very happy with how this, I don't know, what, 30-minute 
painting turned out by Sarah. Uh, thank you, Lucas, for playing along with with us. Um, and I am so grateful to have a space to be able to to share this with you. Um, and then because if you guys want, you're more than welcome to send a tip or a donation. I've got a, um, it is not required. I'll be continuing to do these videos no matter what. Um, it is not, not required, but it will help right now. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put this up for just right now. My Venmo is at Becky Kuiper and I wrote this backwards. I was pretty proud of myself. Granted, I had to write it about six times, but we got it on there. So my Venmo is at Becky dash Kuiper, K I P E R. PayPal is paypal.me slash art wide open studio. And whoop, there it went. I knew, I knew at one point that I was going to knock over the little tripod because it's this big, but thank you guys for playing with me today. And, um, you are so welcome, Katie. I, I hope you had fun and, I love you, Mara, and I love you all so very, very much, and I am sending hugs and prayers and good thoughts to everybody. If you all need anything um, and you can't get out, just let me know. I, I know a lot of people, and I'll be happy to bring you whatever you need. Um, okay, I guess we're going to sign off right now, publish the video, and stay tuned for more. Let me know some days or times that were that would be good if you guys want to follow along with the video. I'll still be publishing them on Facebook to watch whenever you want to. So um, and now we've got a niece fight going on in the comments. Um, you're both my favorite nieces, and I, <laughs> I, uh, I will not ever pick a side there. And Chase is my favorite nephew. So. Um, okay, so I'm going to just leave this on here for just like two or three seconds longer if you choose to do so um, to keep supplies coming. And I will figure out, um, I'm still taking appointments for small classes if anybody wants to. I've got rubber gloves. I've upped um, my sanitation process here. And look, and then there was light. Uh, we had more light to come on. So I love you all. I love you all. I love you all. And call me if you need me, okay? Mwah. Blessings to everybody. Thank you for joining me today. This was such a pleasure.